Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, glad to have you joining us and sorry about a little bit of a technical difficulty there. Uh, I'm Guy Gaster, director of the North Carolina Film Office here with InVisitNC and really excited uh, that you are joining us. Uh, I'm gonna bring on some of our uh, panelists in a moment, but did want to give a little bit of an introduction to the North Carolina Film Office for those who may be new uh, and not as familiar. Um, so the North Carolina Film Office is part of VisitNC and the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina. Uh, we're an office of two, uh, and we work directly with the Department of Commerce on uh, marketing and recruiting productions to North Carolina, uh, thereby creating an economic impact in those filming communities. Uh, in addition to working with the Department of Commerce, uh, we serve as a liaison with other state agencies, including the North Carolina Department of Transportation and the um, state parks, along with Department of Cultural and Natural Resources. And then we also, of course, work with you all as partners and the three regional film commissions that are in the state. As for the current state of the industry, uh, since 2011, uh, we've averaged an, uh, an annual in-state uh, spend of $216 million uh, by the productions, uh, and that number has been growing closer to $300 million, although we've certainly had some starts and stops, uh, which we'll talk a little more about here. Uh, there's over 3,500 film professionals registered in the state, and that's uh, part of a statewide directory that we host um, here on our website, uh, filmnc.com, and it's also fed in uh, by those regional film commissions that I mentioned. Uh, we do have production taking place statewide, and the biggest assets when we market uh, to the uh, film community is our 25% rebate program, our renowned crew base and established infrastructure, and then also our various landscapes uh, that are available throughout the state, which are a key factor with some of the travel shows that we're gonna talk more about in just a little bit. So we always wanna share with our partners that, that uh, economic impact uh, of the industry. And here's a look since 2011, uh, you will see we had our uh, greatest year uh, ever in terms of direct spending in 2021. Uh, this was as the industry came up with ways to move forward uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and so as after a seven month pause in all production, uh, things definitely got back going and, and there was a rush to get caught up and that resulted in a record breaking year for us. Um, and then last year, we followed that up with another great year, $259 million being spent by productions. But what was interesting is we started to see a slowdown in the second half of last year. And that is in part due to what was then a possible strike by the industry's writers and some of the other trade unions and guilds. Um, that has since taken place. Uh, if you're... If you have seen that information, uh, you might have heard as referred to it as the writer strike, and information has just started coming out that it's likely that the Screen Actors Guild, so those professional actors uh, that are in your favorite movies and TV shows, uh, that they are likely to go on strike uh, later this week as well, joining those writers. Um, and because of the strike, a lot of the production has come to a complete halt. Uh, not just in North Carolina, but throughout the nation. Uh, and as a result, our 2023 number isn't that great right now, to be quite honest. We're hovering right around 100 million, uh, definitely hoping that some of those labor negotiations will get worked out. Uh, and as a result, uh, production can uh, spring back to life here in the second part of the year. Uh, but it has impacted, again, not only North Carolina, uh, but all the states in which uh, production uh, plays a major role in, in the economy. And we do have a question on some of the bigger projects that have been in the state, uh, you know, when those projects are coming out. So happy to share that uh, actually this week, 
The Summer I Turn Pretty, uh, which films in New Hanover County, uh, returns to Amazon's Prime Video with their first three episodes of season two. And then they'll drop subsequent episodes each week uh, into August uh, for that. We have a made-for-TV streaming movie, Zoe 102, that will be on Paramount Plus uh, here at the end of the month, July 27th. Uh, a supernatural thriller, The Georgetown Project, is scheduled uh, to be in theaters September 22nd, and that stars Russell Crowe. Uh, there is still, this project does not have a name, uh, so it's still the untitled Please Don't Destroy uh, Project, which filmed in several parts of the state, excuse me, uh, will now stream exclusively on Peacock, NBC's uh, streaming platform, NBC Universal, uh, and that will be released November 17th. And then for those who were at the uh, Visit NC 365, or excuse me, the Visit NC State Tourism Conference this past year, uh, you know, we talked about a Biltmore Christmas uh, coming to the Hallmark's uh, Christmas uh, movie marathon. Uh, no exact date has been released, but it is definitely one of the key um projects uh, that will be part of the annual Hallmark Christmas movies uh, schedule. So we're waiting to get that exactly. And then we do have a rather large Netflix uh, dating experiment show. The Ultimatum um, will be uh, returning. That filmed earlier in the greater Charlotte area, and it is tentatively scheduled uh, to be released at the end of the year on Netflix. So that's a quick look at uh, you know the where the industry is and some upcoming uh, projects. I now like to invite uh, my the other panelists to uh, join, and uh, we're going to have more of a roundtable discussion. This is a little different than some of our other uh, webinars that we've had that have been more presentation style. Uh, this is going to be more of an open discussion and, and uh, a panel, uh, if you will. Uh, joining me is Rebecca Clark. Uh, she's with the Piedmont Triad Film Commission and helps represent area, um, those uh, towns, counties, and cities in and around Winston-Salem, Greensboro, and High Point. Uh, we'll, we'll get a special call out to all those counties uh, coming up shortly. Uh, John Philman is with the city of Asheville, and he does uh, the film permits for the city. Uh, and then Aaron Toole with the Outer Banks uh, Visitors Bureau is also joining us. He serves as a film liaison uh, for that part of the state um, with the Outer Banks uh, and also is that representative between the, the towns and the productions themselves. Uh, so happy to have all of you joining. Um, as always, any questions you have uh, as uh, participants, please put those in the question and answer, and we will be happy to get to those as we go. Uh, and a final reminder, this is being recorded. So if there's something you want to go back and see, uh, feel free to pull that up or share it with uh, someone that you think might have enjoyed hearing this but wasn't able to make it. You can find that recording at partners.visitnc.com. So let's jump to the panelists. And I want to start with Rebecca. Um, one of the things we always talk about is how we work together with our, our regional film commissions. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, not every part of this uh, part of the state has regional film commissions, but those that do, it's a huge asset. So tell us what you do as the Piedmont Triad uh, Film Commission and uh, some of the areas that you represent. Great. Thank you, Guy. And hello, everyone. It's nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Um, hopefully, a lot of my partners that I work with um, are on this on this webinar. I have been working with the Piedmont Tried Film Commission since 1994. I started out as a location scout for the office, and um, now I'm executive director and a one person office. Um, but I represent and market the entire 12 counties of uh, the Piedmont triad. So that's basically every uh, county, including Forsyth and Guilford and bordering every single one of those counties, plus Montgomery County down at the end. And so um, I come from this area. I love this area. I love the state and I love 
what the film industry does to uplift the state's economy. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty substantial and that's why I'm excited about it. And that's what I why I love what I do. That's great. And uh, for those, as you can see on the screen, we do have a map of the state showing uh, the area that Rebecca represents uh, there with the Piedmont Triad, but also the other two regional film commissions are the Charlotte Regional Film Commission, uh, and those counties are uh, list shown there in purple, and the Wilmington Regional Film Commission uh, with those counties colored in in gold or yellow. And then if you're not one of those areas, um, the North Carolina Film Office uh, continues to promote you. Don't feel left out. Um, so we, we do uh, continue to assist those counties and those areas as well. Uh, have, so if you're not familiar uh, with the regional film commissions, uh, I definitely encourage you to reach out to them and introduce yourself uh, because it's a great partnership to have. Uh, so speaking of that, Rebecca, um, one of the things, and I want to be clear, a lot of times when I'm talking with partners uh, mm -hmm. and, and we're giving information, we're talking about the bigger productions, the, the big feature films, the scripted uh, series. Uh, but today, we want to talk a little more about drop-in shows mm -hmm. or these travel shows, the ones that are here for a couple of days and, and ones that really are more mobile uh, than, than some of these other programs. So, Rebecca, tell us what you consider a drop-in show, uh, if you will, and what are some of the requests that those types of productions have that, that are unique? Okay. Um, well, drop-in shows are like the extreme home makeover. Um, there's... Uh, um, uh, what was it that just came to the Piedmont Triad? Um, Pawn Stars. Mm -hmm. They did kind of a, a drop-in type situation. Um, baggage, uh, baggage battles or something like that. There are all kinds of kind of reality-based series that kind of drop in. Or maybe it's like um, one time it was a song competition it might have been America's Got Talent or American Idol, <laughs> uh, but they dropped into a community to um, where one of the talent is from. And so um, those are the types of projects. They're usually just there for a short period of time, maybe a day to three days, something right. like that. Now, I and, know. Oh, sorry. Oh, go I, ahead. No, I go ahead. Say, we were probably going the same place because. We get a lot of, we do have these drop-in shows, and I know John and Aaron both have experienced them as well, especially some of these vacation rental, first-time buyer shows, uh, th those sort of ones. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the biggest requests that we hear with a show like that is they always say, we're filming on private property, first and foremost, but we need to shoot B-roll footage. Rebecca, right. can you give <laughs> insight uh, for those that are uh, participating, what exactly B-roll footage is? Yes, and that's a that's a good, good question to ask because people not in the industry, they're like, B-roll, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so uh, B-roll is essentially when someone is filming in your community, but they kind of want to place it. They want to show, um, let's say it's Asheboro. They want to show maybe the uh, a wide shot shot or an establishing shot of the the zoo and maybe the Asheboro uh, courthouse or something like they want to shoot downtown areas, but it's quick shoots. It's it's usually a, a one to three people with a camera, usually one person with a camera that are just getting in and out of an area uh, or on a sidewalk for a little bit just to shoot some establishing shots. Right. Um, is that pretty much the way you would describe yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a good that's a good one. Um, if you've never had someone ask about B roll in your area, I would say the other place that or other thing that they will typically ask is if if you're a city or if there's a skyline, is mm -hmm. there a good place to get a picture of that? 
And yeah. then, although these requests have fallen down, Aaron, you might be able to to say otherwise. But for a while, we were definitely getting them on. How do we film a welcome to sign um, or something that shows, you know, <laughs> you're now entering a city limit or a town limit um, on that. So so those are some of the B-roll ones. And Rebecca, do you, from your experience and I know each city and town is different and that's what we're going to get into, but especially with B roll type filming, do you find that many of the, the towns or municipalities in your area require a permit for B roll filming? Um, most every single one that I deal with, they do not because, um, usually B roll, um, uh, when people are capturing that, I uh, make sure they're not going to be blocking uh, sidewalk traffic mm -hmm. or vehicular traffic, um, and and make sure it's you know a crew less than like five, hopefully three or less, um, and so um, and and so that with that nobody in this region really requires a permit. However, I think they like to be in the know about it, that there is a show going on in case anybody calls and says, I couldn't get out of my driveway because somebody, I don't know, right. hopefully that would require a permit though. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but hopefully, you know, or if somebody says, I saw a lot of cars and s people in front of this person's business, you know, um, so people will know the community will know what's going on, especially town managers, city managers, the local police, people like that. That's good. Aaron, is is that similar, you know, with the with the towns and communities there in the Outer Banks? Again, I know all are different, so there's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, so with the Outer Banks Visitors Bureau, but my I specifically um, represent officially Dare County, which is a hundred mile long county. I've been told it's a, you know North Carolina's longest contiguous uh, county in the state. So um, it, the, we have national parks, you know, so you have, there's three national parks here. We have um, Jockey's Ridge, which is, um, you know, one of the top most visited state parks in, in the state. We have a couple of national wildlife refuges, which are like animal sanctuaries with recreational access. And then the different towns, um, uh, I think one in particular have different policies um, on like drone filming. So mm -hmm. especially drones. Drones, the biggest um, delineator, you know, probably out here. So so when someone wants B-roll of a, an establishing shot, the White House, Wright Brothers, the Big Hill, the beach, well, it really depends on where you're going to be because you're going to have to get a permit from the national park is different than the state park, which is different than the town of Nags Head. And so being fluent or prepared for that day and in having your communications in order prior to that drop and show coming is will will serve you well if you think that you want to be in the market for something like that. So so they're different. Yeah, that, that's a great point and one that I'm sure partners remember, but also in the heat of the moment. You, you may forget, but just because your your town doesn't require a permit doesn't mean something that is within the town uh, that that's not the town's jurisdiction doesn't require. Um, also, yes, um, on that. So speaking of permits, okay, we've got an expert here, John Philman, uh, who who helps oversee per special events permits. Um, as a whole for the city of Asheville and and the city of Asheville treats film permits uh, in the same manner as a special events permit. So so John, let's start off with the B-roll question for you as well. You know, does the city of Asheville uh, require a permit for B-roll? Not not typically, no guy. We we uh, we look at what any tourist could do on the streets during their vacation in Asheville and 
as long as the B-roll activity is in that same vein. We definitely do require permits for any drone use that, that launches or lands from public property. Okay. But if the drone isn't able to, if the drone doesn't require launching and landing from public property, we wouldn't even require a permit for that because that the the uh, from what we understand the air control rights are through the FAA and that the city mm -hmm. doesn't have any jurisdiction uh, over that use unless they're launching or landing from our space. So we see most of the projects coming through Asheville are the uh, non permitted type of projects, the smaller productions. That Rebecca was mentioning earlier, um, those things are, we, we send them a notice to let them know that they can contact me by mobile phone for any urgent needs that comes up, but otherwise, if they're fine to move along, we have a number of 25 casting crews, so if you have less than 25, uh, you can operate within the public space as long as you're not doing those things Rebecca mentioned, blocking sidewalks, driveways, putting up tensor structures, electrical fire, all of those details, then move it in. But most of the stuff from the Travel Channel, the Food Network, these uh, unscripted reality shows that come through, uh, most of those happen without any permitting at all in Asheville. Uh, and they're all, oh, I'm sorry, Guy, but they're, oh. Oh, Rebecca, you muted yourself there. So, yep, you were good. I'm sorry. Um, so in all of these productions, they're used to traveling all over the country and they're used to having all kinds of different criteria for wherever they travel. So, but they're professional and they, they pretty much know what they're doing. They, they usually bring their crew with them, um, most of the times. Um, but you know, just like, uh, John was saying, I, um, it's good for them to have a contact, uh, like us when it, in case anything comes up while they're shooting, um, that's very, very important. And, and that's one of the reasons like the film commissions, uh, are here too. We're here to help protect the area and uplift the area and market and promote this area for this business. So, John, you mentioned kind of a 25 person um, number as being whether or not a permit uh, is needed, along with other things. But uh, that 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 number uh, was there. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say a new show recently started airing on the streaming platform Max Swiping America. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't seen it, not a bad little dating reality series, but the very first episode featured this city of Asheville, or let me just say they said the city of Asheville. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not sure if they were in or out of the sea limits, but is that a production by chance? Did they reach out to you uh, before they came in? Yeah, and, and um, I, I'd have to look back at the records to see whether we issued any permits or not. I, I can't recall off the top of my head, but I don't think it was a, whatever they required wasn't a heavy lift. The, the, the types of, clients we work with on special events, the traditional festivals, block parties, things in parks, those, the, the, those events, um, they have a different set of problems that they have to overcome than commercial filming. And thankfully, commercial filming people show up and they know what they're doing, like Rebecca right. said. And so the, the, the issues with that is just the speed in expediting their requests quickly because there's not as much time. They'll get you everything you need, but the speed in which you have to work sometimes makes gives you a day or, or, or two days to get everything pulled together uh, versus a special event where it would be, require at least eight weeks uh, to start the process. And then it's a grind to get all the insurance and everything else from the organizers that are not familiar with that. So I would say working with commercial filming is easier than working with all of the other special events because they come on board knowing what they're doing in advance. So Aaron, in, in your role, and again, because of some unique properties uh, there in Dare County, um, does, I, I don't wanna, I, I guess I'll say, does this ring true or is the experience that John is describing there in, in Western North Carolina the same as you, you know, experience and that your your town officials experience, you know, there in Northeastern North Carolina? I would I would say um, 
there was a time and and you know guy we've been doing this a long time together there was a time when everything was kind of new these drop-in shows were new and the real estate shows were kind of new and we had a, the, the guy fieri showed the food network show and the travels so now um like wicked tuna we're on season eight or nine of that now like in the beginning of those relationships, I was doing a lot of um, intermediary work and I used to even fill out permits for people. I was, you know, just excited to have all this stuff. And now a, a lot of those shows are um, done by, you know, there might be a different name. There's a lot of commonality in the production company that's doing it. And so now it's almost like on autopilot. Um, the The interesting nature of like the the vacation rental homes out here is that once you get past the dune line, if you're in the national, if you're on Hatteras Island, for example, or Ocracoke, um, you're in the national park. Right. So uh, the, and I know this applies to across the state, but the national park service does not allow drone flying anywhere in their national park. So you kind of have, um, but drone shots are beautiful. And so their NC 12 highway, which you can kind of see over my shoulder, is a two-lane road that runs through the entirety of, of the Outer Banks. And, you know, if you pull off on the side of the road and you're in the DOT right-of-way and you launch to retrieve that drone on the side of the road, you can fly over the national park, but then you're not in violation. If you're on the deck of a home, you can launch and fly a, a drone um, and not be in violation. But if you drive to Cape Hatteras and you launch a drone up, you know, you're uh, in the mind... It, you know, whatever the language is, but you know, that's a no-no. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the takeaway is if there's a new relationship or a new show, you might do a little more work. And I think you, whomever, you know, we are in the DMO world, we know our community, we know we're, we should know the places that are going to look really good on camera. You should mm -hmm. kind of pre-scout, you know, some of that, those places, at least have some places to show some of the producers that might um, be coming in market. And then, um, if you don't have any B-roll that's already kind of in the can, then I would recommend, you know, go ahead and, and think about acquiring some um, soon, you know, because North Carolina is on the rise. So, Aaron, you you just mentioned, you know, when you first started out and that, that being a new process. Um, mm -hmm. So if if there was a what group did you go to within, you know, one of the local towns, let's say uh, the town of, of Kitty Hawk or uh, Kill Devil Hills. Sorry. Let's go to Kill Devil Hills. Yeah. If they had not had filming before or Guy Fieri hadn't come before, who did you first reach out to, to say, Hey, we've got a project coming. Do mm -hmm. they need to complete anything? I would, I would call, um, if the town doesn't have a, a a public information officer, I would call the town manager and and speak with them. Um, I know, like on my tourism board, we have a representative of every um, community on the Outer Banks that's an uh, elected official. So that's kind of an easy communication. And then once the word kind of catches wind, it's a sort of a small community of when they were like yeah. a big place. You know, you, you might see a thread on Facebook. Oh, you know, XYZ is coming to town. And, and we still have projects all the time, like um, camping shows, RV travel through shows, golf shows. So um, depending on their how new or a, a pilot episode that, that you know, the work's never done, it's just some of those really established shows have a, they don't like need me anymore unless they want some, some fresh B-roll. I mean, if they're on a budget, they're small crew, come in and come out, maybe it rained a lot while they were here. Aaron, do you have any B-roll of the lighthouse or of Highway 12 or people driving? Like, absolutely, because, you know, um, there's one school of thought that you, maybe you feel kind of stingy with that B-roll, like this B-roll cost me $5,000 or 10, you know, whatever the case might be. On the other hand, it doesn't behoove you to have bad footage of your community out there for the world to see either so um i have you know prepared buckets of files in dropbox i can there you go i got here's five minutes of our my best stuff that is uh license free that you can use for the travel channel or, or what have you and then you make your own judgment call um whether or not it's um warrants something like that 
Uh, so Sid town manager office, a great starting point, John, mm -hmm. I, I guess similar question for you. I know it's a little different because you're in an office that gets that, but maybe I'll frame it as where do a lot of the leads once a production gets a hold of you besides the state film office, uh, where do those leads come from? How is a production eventually making their way to your office? Is it, do you, is it a town or the city, a uh, public information officer, like, who's helping direct the production to you? Honestly, I, I feel like it's mostly you guy <laughs> that sends things to me. Uh, I, I assume they, they may call the city manager's office or the main switchboard at the city and they'll transfer them through me. We have a web page that's dedicated to commercial filming and photography. It's side by side with our special events page. Um, we've kept that real short and brief, put the application right on the front, I will contact for the Blue Ridge Parkway since that's a lot of what people are looking for when they come to Asheville. Um, and, and then I just provide that, that kind of personal consult and assistance, um, including location managers or location scouts, because I do get a lot of questions on where's the best view for this or that. And um, our Explore Asheville Convention and Visitors Bureau does have B-roll available, so we'll often direct them to them. I think sometimes actually, yeah, sometimes Explore Asheville might direct the, the sure. projects over to me too. Some, sometimes when they call, they don't tell me where, where they're finding me from. But in any case, they're usually pleased to know that um, it is only the, the biggest impacts that require permits here. Mm -hmm. um, I know in, in other places where they do a lot more film work, uh, it's, it's important to have records of everything here. But uh, in Asheville, we're not, we're not busy uh, to that point where we need that. That's mm -hmm. it. Hey, that's a really good point, John. And and I, uh, from our experience, sometimes when you tell a production they don't need a permit, it can catch them off guard. And then they're like, can I get that in writing? Or, yeah. you know, yeah. whose name is on the line saying, no, I was told not, to, I, I don't have to do that. So with yeah. the city, I, I assume you, that that's kind of your role uh, but is there a standard response you have or something that you share with a production that, that states, no, you're less than 25, you're not blocking, uh, you don't yeah. need a permit? Is that something yeah. you have on file? Yeah, we. I, I just have a template email in Google pop, popping up. I put their name in the top and it says, thanks for calling the city of Asheville. And here's where permitting might be necessary for your production, but here's the conditions under which you can operate as a regular person visiting Asheville. And, uh, but I always give them my mobile number so that they have a number to call. Uh, we, if they require a location release, we would require a permit because that, that, that needs legal review. And because of that piece of it, um, often I'll let people know if you just feel more comfortable with a permit, I'll be happy to issue a permit for general outdoor public spaces from this date to this date. And, you know, even though you don't need one, maybe that gives you what you need to turn back into your director or the producers or whoever needs to have that confirmation. But I send the email out initially saying, here's the standards when we require, here's when we don't, and let me know if we can do anything beyond that. All right, Rebecca, I hope I'm not getting you in trouble, but same question kind of for you on when, because I, I know you get the, the question as well, and you know some of those answers so when you know a permit's not needed and they say, great, can I get that in writing? What do you do for those productions then? I do the same thing that uh, John does. <laughs> I have an email that I send out just stating um, that if you meet these criteria, uh, you do not need a permit for filming wherever. And, uh, and I put my name and my number. And um, so that if they have any problems or run into any uh, trouble, they can call me and I can straighten things out. But I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Yeah, I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it's basically um, pretty easy. Can I ask a question um, to Rebecca and Aaron? Uh, and, and it really has to do with what your what your city what your communities are comfortable with, and when when you do get that urgent call for an unexpected need, do you feel like you have to almost be a liaison to get that expedited? 
because I feel like that is part of my role in Asheville is to work on behalf of the productions that are looking for these very fast turnarounds on things. And I almost have to escort that project through every step of the way because otherwise they would never get what they need in time. Absolutely. That happens a lot. And that's one of the reasons there's film commissions is because we are hired to kind of represent our regions for that purpose to not only try to recruit the business, but to also assist throughout. But it never fails that someone calls me and says, we need a permit tomorrow, or we need a permit even, we need a permit next week. It sends everyone into a panic. But yes, I have to call and and talk to my city managers and all these folks that thankfully I have a great relationship with and say, I know it's a pain and I know it's not a typical special event, but please, you know, let's, let's try to do this. Let's try to help them, you know, unless it's absolutely a ludicrous request that I'm just like, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but usually we like to say yes. Yeah. Aaron, do you have to escort uh, things through your city offices? Yeah, I, I would. Um, there's a lot of heavy touch. I mean, it's part of my um, baked in role as public relations and social media manager. Um, the by and large, like in general, think about the Outer Banks is have like the communities is having a very similar sort of stance um, that it sounds like the city of Asheville does. And that if it's something that you could if it looks like gear that you buy at Best Buy and move through the space, you're not obstructing people, then then you're fine. The in every other town, with the exception of, Na of Nags Head, Nags Head has a a, um, a public policy specifically on no drones if you're going to take off or retrieve on public property. But Kitty Hawk Hill, Double Hills, down in Hatteras Village, then then you're fine. And they even gone to the point where we've had. Uh, a number of that drop-in show business that they're like, hey, if unless you're a big operation, you know, you don't have to call us or that kind of thing. So mine is less formal. If someone asks me, like, you know, hey, Aaron, what are the permits that you need? I'm like, I'll I'll put them in touch with like email thread, um, the National Park Service. National Park Service really likes at a minimum about two weeks notice. Some things happen a little bit faster, and depending on um, the current relationship you might have with the superintendent of that park, um, you know, whether or not it gets pushed through or not. The state parks, about the same amount of time, you know, courtesy. Um, we don't get as much filming interest in the uh, National Wildlife Refuges because the it's just a, uh, it's a blurry border between the you know the, the national seashore and the wildlife refuge it just doesn't come up as much it's a less formal process it's less hmm, is it you know like they will account like my on the outer banks the relationships that we have they're you know they're very accommodating uh, when those sort of one-offs happen and um and yeah so so i take if depending on the nature of it i definitely at least do an email and walk it down into the person that needs. We get a lot of requests for like rooms. So like, hey, we got a crew coming in. We're having trouble finding rooms. It's July. Well, yeah, me too. So so those are the kinds of, I can get on the phone and call like hotels and look for vacancies and maybe a media rates and that kind of stuff. So depending on the nature and how bad we want to get it done, um, kind of jump into the work. Right. So we got a question that came through on the, the Q&A uh, feature, but it, it boils down to if a partner is approached by a production, um, how is a way that they can verify that it is an actual production or, yes, that it's legitimate? Uh, Rebecca, how do you help uh, some of the your um tourism partners uh you know validate or how do you yourself validate a project that reaches out that's a very good question i'm glad someone asked that because 
there are all kinds of productions out there and some are, they'll say, Hey, I'm a feature film. I'm going to do a feature film and I need this and that with your community. And it might be not that there's anything wrong with it, but like a film school student or something like that, or it might be a, a very low slash no budget project. And so um, if you're unsure, that's when I think you can call either your local film commission, if you have one, or even the state film office, um, unless John and Aaron, the you two and listening to you, you're you're essentially film commissioners. I'm I have to break it to you. Yeah. Um uh, but just get in touch with your um local film commission and ask ask us about, you know, have we heard of this company? Do we know anything? Because we can we can find out quickly. Yeah, I, I'm always happy uh here in the state office, both myself or Jen. Um, now that we've got additional, now that we've doubled our staff, uh, but we're happy to look into the production company uh, as well and, and, and say whether or not we can find information on them or whether or not they've reached out to us already in advance. I'm, I'm happy to say that. And, and I quickly will say, you know, times, hey, I'm not saying that they're bad, but we don't have information on them or, or that sort of thing. You know, I, there's, but, but that's, yes, we're just like Rebecca said at the state office, happy to look, if you share with us the name of the production or even better, the production company, we can look up to see um, if that production company has done similar projects and if it sounds legitimate um, or, or makes sense uh, on that. Great. I think so, that helps determine also <clears throat> the amount of time and effort you mm -hmm. you want to put into certain projects too. If it's Steven Spielberg, go all out and get things done immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm joking. I like to I like to treat everyone. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, I like to help everyone, but some projects are going to take priority, definitely. So we've got about 15 minutes left. Uh, if there are other questions, please uh, feel free to send those in and, and we'll we'll get those in uh, to, to, to the panelists here. Um, I, I do want to quickly say, speaking of uh, myself and, and Jen uh, here in the state office, uh, we do keep a list of specific town contacts. Uh, so if someone did reach out, if Vacation Hunters uh, was coming and they said that they were trying to help a couple that's looking to find a place in the Outer Banks, a vacation home to buy, um, and they want to film in, again, Kill Devil Hills, we've got who that Kill Devil Hills contact is and share that information. But we also then usually... I would say eight times out of 10, Aaron, uh, you, you back me up on this. I know there's a few I forget, but um, for the most part, we'll we'll share that information of the town and then also say that Aaron is a good contact. So I'm saying that to say, if a project like this is coming into your area, uh, typically we will, the state film office will let our tourism partners know as well, hey, just giving you a heads up, this is going to be in the area or they may ask or, or, or something like that. Um, again, just making sure people are aware of that. And um, <clears throat> if I may, I I'd like to add something that um, if someone contacts you, you can always ask them, did you get in touch with the state film office or did you get in touch with the Piedmont Triad Film Commission to, to see if they've at least made that step. And if not, a great courtesy would be to have them go to the state website uh, where they have an intent to film form, just so we can track the amount of productions that are happening every year, uh, which helps with a lot of things. Um, 
uh, trying to negotiate better incentives and and things like that. So anytime you can share with us, in case they haven't gotten in touch with us, um, share the information and and point them to the state website for um, so that you know we know what they're doing, and we're all and and in return also. Like I, if something's going to be filming in um, a city or a county that I work with, I'm going to let them know. I'm going to give them a heads up. We got another question uh, that came in and John, I'm going to direct it to you. Um, but if someone, uh, you know, is filming in a neighborhood. So again, let, let's use one of these uh, travel shows or wanting to buy a vacation home. Uh, if they were in Asheville city limits and within a neighborhood, are there restrictions or are there are there processes that the city points them to with re regards to homeowners associations or or neighborhood type restrictions? If if they were if they were requiring a permit, they would be required to notify the neighborhood association. And part of our application for permits, includes uh, our filming directives. And those are just compiled from other cities that I've looked through their filming directives to come up with the ones most applicable here in Asheville. So they understand what they're supposed to do before filming, during filming, after filming, things that are common sense to most people in the industry, but for new people coming in, they may not think that it's not appropriate to park a catering vehicle in front of a restaurant or things like that, you know, so we have some, some of those guidelines there in the, um, in the application that they have to sign off on. And as far as notifying the neighborhood, it, it goes anywhere from actually requiring a meeting with the neighborhood association that they attend the next meeting um, to just posting up notices along the street to let people know that there's filming taking place in progress. So that would probably be at minimum under a permit. If there wasn't a permit, then there would be no requirements that they notify the neighborhood because um, there wouldn't be any real impact. And I assume that information is probably on that uh, film page you said that the city has. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. I was going to say, do uh, you uh, do you want to share that address if people want to reference it and, and look at it themselves? Yeah. So the easiest way to get here is to go to ashevillenc.gov forward slash special events. And then under the events tab, click on commercial filming and photography. Um, and that'll bring you right to this brief paragraph on what we do, an application, the intent to film registration, which uh, uh, Rebecca mentioned, and uh, then my contact information along with some information on the Blue Ridge Parkway, since they're, uh, they require a longer lead time than we do, and, and it's, it's not something that I can approve over here. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the web page. It's brief, but simple. If I showed you the application real quick, just that there's the option to save and return so they can edit their application on the fly as they need to. If it's simple enough, maybe they don't want to create a username, but it's just their contact information, details about the production, and then individual sections for each location. So there's multiple, they can, you know, they often have more than one location. So we'll just go straight through all of this. And at the end, they sign the filming directives and they're done. John, that's, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that that's terrific. And uh, before you mentioned that, I was going to suggest that we share some permits with um, everyone attending today, because um, if your town or county doesn't have one, you might want to consider one. Um, and it is a little different from it's a lot different from other special events like parades where they have months to plan it. Um, it again, it's fast turnaround. And it brings me to one other thing that might come up by people, whether or not to charge a fee for the permit. And uh, I think that's up to the municipalities. Um, and, and if there is a fee, I would just suggest that it's, you know, nominal, like, like Asheville's that's, that's great. Um, nothing like crazy, like a thousand dollars, you know, <laughs> um, because that's going to turn business away. I, I do. And one thing I notice on John's form, um, is a, it also reemphasize what we talked about before on not all projects need a permit. Mm -hmm. And 
and you could see at the very top, it's it stated once again, a permit is not required if it, you know, a, again, enlisted some of those things, you're less than 25 people, not blocking sidewalks, um, that, that sort of thing. I, I think that that's a great reinforcement to, so that people, you know, see that and, and know there. Um, Aaron, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll give you one more thought, you know, but I would love Urian, many, you know, many of the colleagues that are, uh, on this webinar that are participants, um, thinking back to when you first got it started, <laughs> what is, um, you know, one bit of advice that, that you would share, you know, now having done it, uh, if someone was just getting started and working with a project for the first time, what, what's something that, that you, you think that they should definitely keep top of mind? I'd say um, two things, sort of like keep your, manage your highs and lows. So there's a lot of speculative pilots, small operations, small budget stuff that may never see the light of day after they've had that communication and you've rolled out the red carpet for the entire town be careful about your um, word and your work ethic are your most valuable currency. So don't like just casually throw out favors and asks of the stakeholders that you're going to see the next day and that kind of thing. So manage that. And secondly, do your homework on, do a little bit of homework on if guys send somebody to you or there's a show, do at least a cursory search. I, I remember uh, one time, it makes me smile every time I think about it. It's my favorite story. Is that a guy had said, hey, hey, we want to do some show and tell um, on the Outer Banks. There's a, uh, a director who is thinking about doing a film project about the Wright brothers. I'm like, okay, you know, because... I've seen it all. All right, sure, fine. Okay. So we went and showed them everywhere in town. And then we kind of, kind of sat down to have lunch together. Um, and, and guy told me who his name was and all this stuff. He was there, it was father and son. And uh, his name was Steven Lisberger. And so we're sitting at lunch and I was like, so uh, what have you done? What other projects have you done that I might know about? You know, and his son was like, well, uh, there was the big one. And I was like, yeah, really? What was that? And he's like, well, well, Tron, I'm like, like Tron, excuse me, <laughs> Tron, <laughs> like, like one of my favorite movies in the world, you, you're the, you know, the director and the creator, like he, he developed Tron, like the first one and the second one, you know, and I was just like floor, I want to run to Kmart and buy like a doll or something, have him sign it. And uh, it was just sort of a missed opportunity on, on my part. So a little shame on me. That was just kind of funny. That was, you know, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. But that's one of my funniest, uh, you know, moments. So do a little bit of research on who you're talking to, but you know, be sure about you know those favors that you call in. Don't do it casually. So, John, uh, question for you know, same for you. You you've been in your position for a while now, but if you were to, uh, you know, move to a new city or town and and starting from scratch, what's uh, one piece of advice you would give? to someone just getting started and working, particularly with these more like these travel drop-in shows? I, I would say don't, don't, don't um, recommend unnecessary processes and policies for the smallest of work because you're going to eventually develop the larger projects that need more of your time and if you have to take all of your time and put it towards those larger projects, but then you also have all of these requirements for the smaller work, it'll be unmanageable. So I would set those expectations um, towards the more impactful work and re relating to the um, relating to the issue around qualifying productions. Um, we generally don't qualify productions mm -hmm. unless they are significant. We get very few of those, but um, there's one that we just recently did. Uh, Nick Walinda is a high wire uh, act that has walked across New York and Las Vegas and around different places in the world. And, um, and that was one that's coming through Asheville that will include a live broadcast next year. And I haven't mentioned it to you yet, Guy, because it's been 
it was touch and go for a while, but now it's scheduled next year. So I can share that with you later. But um, that, that was when we qualified because they actually need to attach things to the city hall building. And so there's a lot of engineering involved in that work. And so sometimes when you're talking about that type of work, you definitely can't just have anyone coming out there with pyrotechnics and attachments and lasers and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big one. So yeah, looking forward to working with you on that. Um, all right, I'm going to give a little uh, chance if uh, anyone wants to get any last minute questions in, uh, please share. Just a quick reminder, our next uh, partner webinar will be August 10th, again, Thursday at 10 a.m., uh, the marketing team will be joining us and they're going to be talking about uh, content creation, best practices for your brand. Uh, so both our marketing team and uh, representatives from Blue Choir uh, will be presenting about uh, content creation. Uh, as always, you can sign up for that uh, at the partners website and information will also come out via uh, the monthly or weekly newsletter news link. Uh, and uh, go ahead and also share if you have any follow-ups you want to do directly with any of these panelists. Uh, sorry, guys, I didn't ask you all ahead of time, but I assumed you wouldn't mind if I gave your contact information. Um, but uh, here is the contacts uh, for everyone that, that was speaking. And I also included Jen's information uh, in our office because um, she does oversee the, our town and city contact list as well as county contacts. So if you're interested to know whether or not uh, a municipality within your area is listed, uh, feel free to reach out to Jen and she would be happy to share that with you. Or if you know it's probably not listed and want to share that with us, uh, we're happy to add uh, those contacts to that list. All right, as we wait, um, uh, Rebecca, I'll, I'll give you one more chance to, uh, is there, uh, you know, any words of advice you would give for these tourism partners? Uh, again, focusing primarily on these travel type shows uh, as well. Um, one of the things that I don't, don't think was addressed was uh, publicity. It's always wise to check with the production uh, before you, post something about the production being done because a lot of times they like to stay um, kind of on the down low at first because they want the big reveal to be on their on the show whatever <clears throat> whatever episode it is so um, just be mindful of that and yeah confidentiality okay that's great. That no, that's very good uh, because that 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 is definitely one uh, on there. So okay, uh, last uh, Aaron, any last thoughts? Mm, uh, Steven Spielberg, if you're if you're watching, <laughs> um, no, call yeah, me. Think, yeah, call us. Call us. We're gonna fight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, like seriously, I you know we we love the attention for the area. Um, everything has its place and day, and um, I'm always, you know, more than happy to help guide you to the right lane if it's not something that I can handle myself. So give us a call. That's great. Uh, John, give you the last word here. Okay. Well, I would say Asheville is open for business. We are definitely looking for projects. Um I would strongly recommend not having talent stay in the central downtown hotel across from our free speech public assembly area. Uh, otherwise, yeah, please bring it on to Asheville. That's great. And, and again, I, I for all of you, thank you for being with the webinar today. But uh, all three of these folks, I think, are more than happy to talk specifics with you or how would they handle it uh, type question. So, um, you know, if you didn't get a chance to ask something or didn't want to ask it uh, in, in front of everyone, uh, certainly reach out um, because they have been through a lot of these and, and um, as you can see, are, are, are well seasoned with it uh, and, and have been great assets for the state and especially for the state film office. So... Uh, well, if there's no other, not, I'm not seeing any last minute ones coming in. Uh, this will conclude our webinar.
Thanks again for everyone uh, for participating and thanks to our panelists for sharing their information. Again, we hope you'll join us uh, next month, August 10th, where we'll talk content creation. Until then, uh, have a great one and we'll talk with you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Guy. Keep up. Bye now. Everybody. You did a great job for us. Thank you. Thanks. It was good meeting you, Aaron, and John. You too, Rebecca. See you, John. Thank <clears throat> you.